<laughs> Greetings, unsettled souls, and welcome to the correct views. Sam I be reporting for the media speaks. Uh, I'm going to say real quick. Normally, there's an H. Uh, well, the, I guess a, it comes up as HD on the video you're going to see, but the really nice HD recording camera is currently you in use for another project. That will be a surprise, and uh, you can only ride one uh, one horse with one ass, as it were. So the video quality on the media speaks, which is where I go live because they get it first, always. Um, I tend to post the higher quality version later on my channel, and that's the one that has all the graphics and stuff that I produce in later. Well, that one won't be posted, so watch the one you're watching now. Um, also, have you noticed some shady activity? Let me do this before I get into the news here. Have you noticed some rather shady activities from the swines at Google? And they're insisting on changing everything about the page that was ever enjoyable at all. They're destroying the page. Every time YouTube has made an update in the last two and a half years, the site has been worse. They, um, I've long suspected that they are trying to keep you away from independent media using every trick in the book. It used to be that you would have references and things, and now in the What the Watch come up, it's almost always something sponsored. Now that they've made me use my name by tricking me into it when I clicked it on accident, it looks like the correct views, if it ever hires anybody, is stuck with the name Sam DeGangi. And because the email account that I originally had associated with it is not associated with it now. And last but not least, Alex Jones, Miss Milky the Clown. All the YouTube subscriptions I had that uh, they might not want you to go to suddenly don't come up as references anymore. That seems rather interesting, doesn't it? Anyway, guys, uh, well, that is the news. I'm going to say on to the news, but no, that is the news. Something fishy is going on here. Either that, or it seems like a mighty big coincidence. Um, SHTFplan.com. McGrath. Somebody in government is afraid of what is coming video. And this is dedicated to the individual that wanted to troll his way onto my page and, uh, ins and insist that, uh, you know, that these sites are nothing but conspiracies. Uh, my girlfriend and I went to uh, the King's Island. There was a lady in line. My girlfriend had to start talking uh, real loud about how this woman was wrong. She started saying uh, to her friend that Alex Jones, it's good that they're talking about it. We are having an effect. Alex Jones isn't news. It's a conspiracy site. It's always struck me as odd for two reasons. First of all, he sources everything. Second of all, um, many times when you say that something doesn't look right, people automatically assume that you're saying there's some conspiracy there. And this is one such article. Am I saying, or is uh, Mark Slavo saying, who wrote the article, that the government is definitely terrified because something is horrible is coming and they know it. No. That would be you know, within the realms of possible conspiracy if you were to say that as fact. However, looking at the facts that you have in front of you and asking certain questions does not make one a conspiracy theorist. And i got a couple stories that are along that vein right here, all sourced, Mr. Troll. While, av while the average American may have been convinced that the economy is recovering and happy days are dead ahead, few are talking about the reality of what's going on behind the scenes. They act as if the crisis of 2008 has long passed, and whatever was responsible for it has been solved through massive trillion dollar bailout injections. Most fail to realize how serious of an issue we faced just five years ago and even fewer understand how close we are to a collapse so incredibly horrific that it could change the very landscape of the country. For those paying attention to the warning signs, it should be clear that something isn't right. And there's many sources, Mr. Troll, within the article, so go to it. For those paying attention, uh, Charlie McGrath of Wide Awake News weighs in and suggests that not only is the next stage of collapse rapidly approaching, but that our government is fully expecting it. 
It was sold to the people of this country that bailouts had to happen because they didn't happen to see the pandemonium in the streets. A recent biography by Jordan Brown, former Prime Minister of England, showed how worried he was if banks shut down. People couldn't get their food, they couldn't get their fuel, they couldn't get their medicine, and they would be literally anarchy in the streets. I hate when they use anarchy that way because it gives true anarchy a bad name. Uh, we know that has never happened. We know that the people of the world were scared into that happening, yet we spent trillions of dollars to rescue these institutions, namely the ones who were not re regulated in the first place, who caused the problem, who are even larger now than they were before. So what happens, it says, or it asks, <clears throat> when the next crisis hits, and it could be very soon. If you want to know what's going to happen, listen to the words of the president. We're never going to have another taxpayer-supported bailout. I beg to differ. The next bailout is going to come from the taxpayers. We're not going to call it that. We're going to call it a bail-in. We all, all we have to do is look at the Financial Stability Board inside Europe to see what they did and to see the stage has been set for the next round of collapse. The people who have their money in banks are going to be the ones who lose. This is the agenda moving forward. I'm going to go on with this article. Now, I have warned you. At nauseam, in how many, a billion episodes maybe, I have had many articles up on the media speech. I'm pretty sure uh, poor Anthony Cord is sick of hearing Sam talk about banks. But you know what? He's our editor. Bam, ask him how many I've done. I have warned you repeatedly with a million sources. This isn't just some guy with long hair babbling. I talked to you about how they did it in Cyprus. They took the people's money. I talked about how they have it set up to do again. I've talked about other nations where it's happened. I uh, go to how to live without banks on the media speaks. That's my article on exactly how to do what the title says. If you don't listen to me and they steal your money, I have almost no sympathy for you. If you're listening to this and you have money in banks, you're begging for it. You're begging for it. You're going to get it. The Associated Press confirmed in February that the Department of Homeland Security has an open purchase for 1.6 billion rounds of ammunition. Armored vehicles have been seen flowing through the streets. Drones fly through the air. The expansion of the, secu the security industrial complex. For what? Somebody in government is afraid of what is coming. And you can't believe the lies of this administration of the past or the agenda that's been put forward to have us believe that this is all to protect us against terror. Somebody knows what is coming. Is this all a coincidence? We know that the U.S. government security apparatus, it says, has been stimulating economic collapse scenarios and that the fallout that would follow, and this is why they are actively implementing a multi-billion dollar control grid all over the country. Again, there's tons of sources in this. Uh, it's written within the sentence. I'm not going to read each source, but for Mr. Troll, go to uh, shtfplan.com. There can be no other explanation for the activities of the Department of Homeland Security, the military, and the government at all levels from local to federal. <coughs> In fact, the U.S. Treasury Department just released a report indicating that the nation's debt crisis could lead to a collapse so catastrophic that it could last for more than a generation. So you people will talk about the, uh, the Great Depression. The Great Depression did not last a whole generation. Whether what happens on October 17th or 13 or five years from now, it's only a matter of time. We're talking about scenarios much more severe than the Great Depression. It isn't just happening in America. Switzerland recently engaged in war games that simulated an economic collapse scenario against France. Well, last time I checked, Swiss and, uh, Switzerland and France were never at war. What are they worrying about? Never, not at war. In 2011, the British government developed plans to evacuate their citizens from European countries in expectation of a monetary and economic collapse. The British government is a conspiracy theory? Really? I don't know. Either that or it's not conspiracy. You can't have it both ways. The exercises and drills may be compartmentalized and so that those who are partaking in them don't really know why. Never letting the left hand know what the right hand is doing. But there are those in the higher echelons of power that know very well the end game and then what it's going to be. None of this is coincidence. And uh, there you go, people. I've read almost the whole article. I'll save the end for you. Another warning from the correct views.
This is uh, Infowars.com. Paul Joseph Watson. Homeland Security spends eighty million on armed guards for civil disturbances. You may have noticed I wrote "government panics" with a question mark on the title of uh, the post. It went out. You know, you got to see why. The Department of Homeland Security is set to spend eighty million on hiring a raft of armed guards to protect the IRS and other government buildings in upstate New York during public demonstration and civil disturbances. Once again, <clears throat> prompting concerns that the federal agency is preparing for fruit stamp riots, anti-tax demonstrations, or some other form of unrest. So now the British government, Mr. Troll, is a conspiracy theorist. And so is the Department of Homeland Security. Um, what are they expecting that's going to cost $80 million when it goes down in front of a government building? Anybody? According to the solicitation posted on the Federal Business Opportunities website, the Federal Protective Service, a unit of the DHS, is looking for a contractor to supply armed protective security officers to guard a variety of government buildings in the region, including IRS buildings during tax season. PSOs will be required to be armed, and some posts may require screening of visitors using cancer-causing x-rays, magnometers, states the solicitation. It goes on, the armed guards will be using public demonstrations as well as civil disturbances for other unanticipated events as a needed basis. This acquisition is for approximately 380,000 hours of basic service, 20,000 hours of temporary additional services, and 3,500 hours of emergency security services per year. They are expecting some pissed off mofos. Currently, there are an estimated 205 guards protecting approximately 95 posts and over 55 buildings. The estimated value of this contract is between 70 million and 80 million states for solicitation. Um, I've been getting a lot of new viewers. I'm going to digress for a second. If I say something like that, like they're, they're expecting uh, some pissed off mofos, the correct views has always been about being professional and then putting it in the terms of the average person from the street. Uh, why? Because I'm trying to get people to listen that don't normally listen. Okay, I'm I'm from this. I grew up in the hood, uh, and you know I got an education. I read books. I uh, learned stuff. But I will always do that. It's not me being unprofessional. It's me waking people up. Why does the DHS feel the need to blow 80 million dollars <throat> at a time of cutbacks, and yet more armed guards to protect government buildings during public demonstrations? Why is the federal agency preparing for, what is it, food stamp riots, perhaps anti-IRS demonstrations, or some other form of civic civil disorder? In June, it emerged that the DHS was purchasing top-of-the-range body armor and helmets for FPS guards as part of preparations for riot control situations. This following a controversial drill last year, dubbed Operation Shield, during which FPS agents armed with semi-automatic guns were posted outside a Social Security office in Florida. The unannounced exercise centered around detecting the presence of unauthorized persons and potentially disruptive and dangerous activities. I'll tell you what, from personal experience, I was lucky enough to take martial arts for a year and a half under Master Rich, Rick Blackwell at Victory Agent Arts. And I did so because, having grown up in aforementioned hood, I knew that it was important for me to be prepared for the likelihood that I could be attacked. You don't prepare for things you don't think are going to happen. I didn't go outside and paint my house pink because I think they're going to pass a city ordinance requiring me to have a pink house. So you don't prepare for what you don't think is going to happen. Could the increased security around IRS buildings and ask be related to the introduction of Obamacare? The federal government has consistently denied that any fines pertaining to Obamacare's noncompliance could be seized from bank accounts, and I'll get to that in a minute. Despite reports last year that the IRS handled, hired 16,500 new agents to harass citizens who attempt to evade the law. Okay. Well, you think, well, that's not going to happen because Obama said that it wasn't going to happen. 
Well, here we go. Also from Paul Joseph Watson, Obamacare fines to be seized from bank accounts. So the question mark here, but uh, here we go. Check this out. He said they're not going to take. They're not going to take any fines, right? They're not, not going to take them. How's it worded? Uh, from your bank account. Your bank account is safe, right? Okay. A man who attempted to sign up for Obamacare online was told that the fine, a fine of over four grand a year for refusing to take out mandatory health insurance could be taken directly from his bank account and that his driver's license would be suspended and federal tax lien placed against his home according to an entry on healthcare.gov's Facebook page. Nah, they're not expecting anybody angry over that. What? They're going to demonstrate over just a little pocket change like four grand, right? Oh, you will? What do you think they're preparing for? Oh, but I'm crazy, right? I'm a nutcase. Well, the nutcase is going to go on. If true, the implementation of Obamacare is going to be a whole lot more draconian than Americans have been led to believe. Will Sheehan claims that when he tried to sign up for Obamacare and then register to opt out, he received an ominous warning. Sheehan's full Facebook post reads, I actually made it through this morning at 8 a.m. I have a pre-existing condition, type 1 diabetes, and my income base was forty-five dollars to $55,000 annually. So I chose Tier 2, the Silver Plan, and my monthly premiums came out to $597 a month with $13,988 yearly deductible. If you have $13,000 sitting around, good Lord, I mean, when, when I went through my vertigo, for listeners that know that was hell, uh, thank God it was uh, from an inner ear infection, not from anything else. Thank God. Um, I, I pay, I think, uh, 90 a month for my insurance. My deductible for the CAT scan, the chest x-rays, all the stuff they had to roll out, uh, blood work, all of that came to about a grand, $1,200. Did that take a big chunk out of everything that I've saved for uh, as long as I've been able to save anything? If you have any idea how much it took, it's terrible. However, that's not my point. My point is $13,988 as a deductible for an insurance plan that cost $597 a month. That's affordable care? Affordable or who? The Rothschilds? There is no possible way that I can afford this, so I opt out and choose to continue along with no insurance. I received an email, he said, tonight at 5 p.m., informing me that my fine would be $4,037 and could be attached to my yearly income tax return. Then you take into the repercussions portion of non-payment of a yearly fine. First, your driver's license will be suspended until paid. And if you go 24 consecutive months with non-payment and you happen to be a homeowner, you will have a federal tax lien placed upon your home. You can agree to give your bank information so that they can easily automatically withdraw your penalties weekly, bi-weekly, or monthly. This is by no means free or even affordable. Uh, Shahan went on. She, yeah, Shahan went on to point out that it's, the site makes you input all of your personal information before giving you the indic the indication of the costs, meaning a database of the uninsured is being built. He added that you could not afford to pay the premium, so would have to break the law to pay the fine, leaving him still with no health coverage. Think about it, people. Think about it. Why are they making you take your and give them your information first? I, I, I would love to know. I, I would really, really love to know. That's a little late for this notice, my uh, picture of uh anyway, this is important to notice. This is this is what a protest looks like, by the way, outside of a bank. Looks to me like they're expecting that kind of abuse to be coming. Friends, um, do me a favor here real quick.
I'm going to go ahead and call this up because you're going to love it. Go to TheMediaSpeaks.com and then click on Bud K. I'm going to go ahead and make it real big so you know what to click. It might be a picture of an axe. Spooky, it's Halloween. Um, all jokes aside, guys, go to the Bud K catalog. Order up some of the really cool things they have there. Christmas is around the corner, and maybe you're paying, I don't know, almost five grand in Obamacare fines. Well, if you are a said person paying said fines, you probably only have about five bucks for Christmas presents, right? Well, we got you covered. All of this stuff, five dollars or under. $3.99, the M48 Commando Pocket Survivor wire, wire Saw. Um, for those of you that have anybody in your, uh, your family or friends or on your Christmas list, Christmas, Merry Christmas, and Happy Holidays. Um, Bud K Hollow Handle Survival Knife. Well, their survival is $4.99. Tactical Warrior Tonto Neck Knife with Linear and Sheath, $2.98. A quality knife for $2.98. Um, the blank ink pen knife. Uh, it's a black black ink pen knife. It's stuck all over my screen. I need to take care of the better screen. Uh, but black ink pen knife, three ninety eight. Got a James Bond fan on your Christmas list? Get him a James Bond movie and buy him a black ink or her a black ink pen knife. They will love you for life. All right, friends, uh, it's some extreme waste coming here. This will make everybody just delighted, I'm sure. I don't even want to report on it, but I'm going to. The building for no one. <clears throat> the Defense Department set to demolish a huge facility that was unused and unneeded. Now, keep in mind how much it's going to cost to rip it down and think about how easy it would be to at least... Uh, donate the space to have it converted. Uh, I'm glad we have no poor people, no homeless people. I'm not saying you can just give it to charity. I understand there's upkeep and whatnot. But if we took away a lot of the red tape in the world, you'd be, I, I promise you, if you took away all the red tape and all the money the government would want and regulations that would restrict everything that you did, if you took those restrictions away and you gave this building that I'm about to tell you about to charities without all that red tape, they could do so much good with this. This is going to make you furious. Cuss now. Just take a second and just swear. Get it out of your system because you're going to get angrier the more I read it. As the federal government and state governments continue to shut down or curtail core education, environmental and scientific programs due to lack of money, the disclosures of unspeakable ways continue to mount in Afghanistan and Iraq with no appearance of accountability or abatement. Indeed, for years, the media has reported billions of lost or wasted funds, including money disappearing into corrupt government circles of leaders in the countries. Yet Congress would prefer to debate Planned Parenthood or global warming grants. Consider the latest outrage. The U.S. military spent $34 million of your money, our money, to build a huge headquarters for the Marines in Afghanistan with a theater, special operations rooms, and other amenities. The problem is that various people, including the Marine commander, were saying that it was not needed and would not be used. Now it is likely to be demolished, unused, and unoccupied. There was the bridge to nowhere as a quote for that, for those of you that don't know. And now we have the building for no one. Where I work, they, they order pizza and they have an all-you-can-eat buffet. It's like pizza, pasta, JoJo's, uh, garlic bread. Sometimes, I, I almost died. They'll take a whole pizza if it's left over and fart in the trash. So now I've been taking it in the pizza home and giving it to family and friends. They love to see me. Um, hey, at least they finally do. Kidding. Uh, I'll bring the food to them. And, uh, you know, I can't stand to see that go to waste. It, it makes me sick when they do that. This is $34 million. The building is larger than a football field. It has state-of-the-art air conditioning and equipment. Well, I'm glad nobody in Afghanistan, there's no poor people there that could use this at all. As usual, contractors made a mint on the building and people in the military made sure its lack of need or likely use would not stop the money from flowing into willing hands. 
John F. Sofco, Special Inspector General for Afghanistan's Reconstruction, wrote about the building in a recent letter. The 64,000 square foot facility <clears throat> in Camp Leatherneck has everyone, as usual, pointing fingers in every direction with the result that no one will be punished. Sofco wrote, the building will probably be demolished. The building continued, despite a letter sent to the top commander at the base, that the building would not be used beforehand and should not be built. Contract officers simply ignored the letter and kept the money and construction going. Last paragraph. Of course, the building is the perfect metaphor for our recent wars, throwing billions on operations and programs that showed little evidence of long-term impact. No one wanted to take responsibility for the to pull out of the war, so we just kept spending hundreds of billion dollars and billions of dollars and killing, wounding thousands of our personnel. The importance was the appearance that we remain firm and victorious, like an empty building in the middle of a desert. It gets worse and worse, friends. <clears throat> Those of you that know I do my Fukushima update on a regular basis uh, know that I am uh, probably one of the people that follow all things nuclear more than just about any other news show you can think of. I've been reporting on a lot of these that are uh, real close to home. And uh, keep in mind, you're seeing more and more of these. People have the misconception that, oh, it's fine. You know, it's perfectly fine. We've had power plants forever, and the worst we've ever had is Three Mile Island, which is bad enough that you should never read Hershey's um, to this day. But you're going to see more and more of these because they're extending the lines past what they were meant to operate at, which increases the chance of a meltdown. And for those of you that really don't know what a meltdown is, it's a life destroyer. Look up nuclear meltdown effects, uh, and you'll be rushing back to this video to listen. I promise you on a stack of Bibles. A uh, report, Indian Point Plant had most nuclear violations in the U.S. White Plains, New York. The Indian Point power plants in the New York, that would be a big city for you Lady Gaga fans, and the suburbs have been cited for more violations than any other nuclear site in the country, although 99% were low-risk violations according to the federal awaiting release. Well, the uh, keep in mind what's considered safe, uh, type in uh, raising the limit. Well, how would you type that? Nuclear safety limits. You'll find that they get raised every time a disaster happens because you know radiation becomes less harmful so that you can keep the bottom line in the right direction, right? What they call safe is not safe, people. The Government Accountability Office report using figures from the Nuclear Regulatory Commission said four of the 384 citations between 2000 and 2012 were for higher level violations. Many plants around the nation have more in that category. But no plant site has had more total violations. Well, that doesn't make me feel any better either, that some people have had more higher level ones. You need to close them all down, including the ones in Iran being built. You bet your ass. The closest to Indian Point's total was at the Cooper plant in Brownville, Nebraska, which had 374 violations. 11 of those were higher level, the report says. Cooper has just one reactor, while Indian Point has two. Lower level violations are those considered to pose very low risk, such as improper upkeep of an electrical transformer. So, you know, you get a very low risk cancer. Um, Entergy Nuclear, owner of Indian Point, if you own any stock in Entergy Nuclear, you are part of the problem with our nation. You are part of the problem. If you have a mutual fund that they're in, you're part of the problem. They issued a statement saying it has received the most regulatory scrutiny of any plant in the country. It said Entergy's commitment to address even minor issues and enhance safety is unrelenting. Philip uh, Musgas of the environmental group Riverkeeper and Indian Point Critic said of the plant's violations, even if they're low-level violations, they're still safety violations, and the NRC does not have an effective system for tracking them. The people of New York should wonder why Indian Point has twice as many as any other plant in the Northeast. Indian Point is arguing for a 20-year extension to the plant's licenses. 
The license for Indian Point 2 already has expired, but continued operation is permitted during hearings. Oh, yeah, just, you know, meltdowns can happen during hearings for your responsible ideas. Don't you know that? The GEO report was done at the request of four senators and obtained by the Associated Press. Before the government shut down the report, it has been set for public release later this month. It shows that the number of safety violations at U.S. power plants varies dramatically from region to region, pointing to inconsistent enforcement. No, pointing to a purposeful cover-up so that they can keep running. In New York, besides Indian Point, the Fitzpatrick plant in Oswego County had 116 violations, all but one of them were level. And two nine mile plant reactors, also in Oswego, totaled 143 violations, including 140 low level. And the Gina plant in Wayne County had 115 violations, 111 of them low level. Low level for who? You know, that, that's, that's the ongoing question there. Um, also, I've been telling people all month I can only get to so many dust caps when I do the dust cap of the month award. Over the course of this month, I don't know what it is, but I've wrapped up so many stories about dumb people that one of them are going to get the Dunce Cap this month sent to them with their certificate, proving that they are the Dunce Cap Month award winner. But there's so many stories of dumb people that I have to pepper the idiots out throughout the course of the whole month, or my Dunce Cap of the Month uh, show is going to be five hours long. So. Without further ado, here's one of the other ones that are incredibly stupid, but not stupid enough to make the nuts cap of the month. Three black soldiers arrested for stabbing white comrade to death, called him a cracker. So why are the police not sure if it was not a hate crime? The police, obviously, are the ones that I wanted to give the nuts cap of the month award to. The reason I didn't is I gave a Dunce Cap of the Month award to the Child Protective Services of, in Texas when they took the child away from a perfectly loving, responsible home and put them in the home of uh, a family that murdered the child. And I didn't want another bummer Dunce Cap of the Month. I, I wanted it. I, I, don't, I don't always want them to be that depressing. So it was for that reason that I didn't give it to them. And even as I read this, this is so stupid that I think maybe they should have gotten it. Police today said the stabbing death of a white army soldier allegedly at the hands of a group of African-American comrades was not a hate crime, despite witnesses claiming they called him a cracker during the confrontation. Now, I'm somebody who doesn't believe we should have a hate crimes. Why? We already have crimes against murdering somebody who gives a damn what your motivation was. If you murder somebody, if you hurt somebody, we have laws against it. We don't need it's because of hate. I don't care what it's a what it's for. If you murder somebody, you murder somebody. I don't care what your motivation was. Dumb law anyway. Tevin Geik, 20, was left for dead in a parking lot near his base at Lakewood, Washington, in the early hours of Saturday morning, and three soldiers have been arrested over the killing. In the hours after the stabbing, the ever-responsible police said they believed the attack was racially motivated because it claimed some of the assailants, a group of black men, called Tevin a cracker, a racist term for a white person. But Lakewood police officers today said they no longer believed the killing to be a hate crime following the arrest and speaking to everyone they believed to be involved. What if it had been a, a white person beating up a uh, Mexican or a black person and using slurs? What if, uh, what if a person from Switzerland was to beat up a, uh, a black person and using an mob? I don't give a damn what country you're in. Why is this not a hate crime? That's why they almost got the dunce cap. All the suspects are from Joint Blossy McCord and served in the same combat infantry unit as Tavern. The accused are Jeremiah Hill, 23, the alleged murderer, Sarah M. Johnson, 21, and a Johnny Runin Bareford, 21. Uh, the two officers are still being, two others are still being sought, but they have no hate in them, of course. Speaking exclusively to Mail Online, Tevin's mother, Jennifer Rose, fought back tears as she said, that she got a text from her son just hours before his death saying he was going to get a tattoo to celebrate his military graduation. She said Tevin trusted everybody <clears throat> until they gave him a reason not to trust them. 
he was really kind hearted and he would give them he would give you the shirt off his back. He absolutely loved being in the military and was looking forward to graduating. He wanted to be an oil rigger. Mrs. Rose, 39, added that there was no way that Tevin would have said anything racist to provoke his killer. She said, I have a hard time with that racism because we have some really good friends who are black and we consider them family. It may have been racial from their side, but not from my son. The attack <clears throat> has sparked an outpouring of emotion on Facebook with Tevin's stepfather, Dean Rose, writing, I love you, son, and the world is not as good without you in it. You will be missed. Uh, I'm not going to read all the really sad things that are on this. I go to the article. The slaying happened when Tevin and soldier friends Matthew Barnes and Brian Johnson were walking home to Joint Base Lewis McCord on Saturday morning. Barnes told Cairo TV that the attackers drove past, and one of them in the back shouted something like, White and Cracker. Barnes said that he shouted back, so this is how we treat combat veterans now. The car turned around and came back, and five men got out surrounding the three friends. Four then walked away, but a fifth walked up to Tevin and appeared to bump and bear hug him and stabbed him multiple times. Barnes said, I was sitting there holding my hand on his chest and then called 911 with my left, screaming at them and telling them exactly where we were and that they needed to hurry and uh, please hurry. Right before I got off the phone, I couldn't feel the heartbeat anymore and he was gone. He added that the men were looking for trouble. They were looking for someone to attack. Barnes said, there's a derogatory term that they use for white people, and it's cracker. And I heard that phrase repeated numerous times, which is why I thought race had something to do with it. Colonel reported that detectives identified the suspects after another soldier came forward and said that Hill had told him that he'd killed somebody. But it's not a hate crime. No, no, no hate in it because it's impossible to hate a white person when you're another color, right? Friends, what we need to do is eliminate hate crimes. We need to let nonviolent uh, criminals such as uh, pot smokers, um, nonviolent drug users, um, the, the first two tiers of DUIs out of three, we can start letting these people out of jail. And you know what? We'd have all kinds of room to lock up people that murdered people, no matter the reason for the murder. Friends, you are listening to The Correct Views. Thank you for doing so. Good night. God bless. It's Sam I B signing out. Uh, make sure you go to themediaspeaks.com. Look at the work of Kyle, Court, D. Lake, and myself. There's written articles. There's videos going up all the time. You'll get the best, most up-to-date news on there. Um, don't forget Dana Marie Christ, uh, the charity connection. Uh, we're helping her beat lung cancer, and so far she's still with us. We're doing it, friends. And uh, lastly, please do donate to me if you can. Every single penny that you give to me goes towards a better show. I don't you know, use it for anything else. And uh, that's it, friends. I hope you like the show. Good night. And if I can find out how to end the broadcast. Thank you for watching.